Today we're going to focus on cam design. Regarding cams, um, they're not so bad to design. However, they can be difficult to they can be difficult to make. Um, the cam is an equivalent to a four bar linkage where the links are able to change length. And so it's equivalent to a four bar linkage with variable link links. Um, it's an example of function generation, which you may recall um, from the previous chapter, I believe, uh, chapter two. And in this particular chapter, chapter eight, we're going to deal with the design of cams to meet specific goals. Uh, cams are classified um, by many different things. Um, the first that we will look at is the type of follower motion that the cam has. We have either translating or rotating cams. Here we have an example of both types. Um, this first type here where you see your cam here as link two um, with a revolute ground. And here we have our follower also pivoting here. Um, this would be an example of a rotating um, follower. Okay, so you see that this follower here pivots at this point. Um, what we also see here, looking at this same um, system, we can see kind of an effective four bar placed on top of it. And you can see here that these would be the effective links. And as this cam rotated, in this case it's rotating here at this rate omega two, um, the, sh the length of this coupler, for example, and the other links also would change shape. Okay, so you can imagine as this link two moves a little bit here, um, this red line which goes from the current center of um, the cam and the current center of the follower would change its length. And so this is just an example of how um, cams are like a four bar with variable link lengths, variable length links. Here we have a translating follower. Okay, so our pre previous example was a rotating follower, and here we have a translating follower. So again, we have a cam, and the follower here moves back and forth along this direction. So you kind of see here that we say that the follower direction is back and forth. Um, this particular um, uh, linkage, if we wanted to then create a, a I guess, an, uh, an analogy to a four bar, um, what we have here is an effective link that was at infinity, because at infinity we'd have a straight um, moving follower going back and forth. Another way of classifying cams is the type of cam. Um, we have radial cams, and these were the previous um, two that I just showed with the translating follower and the rotating follower. We also have axial cams that you see on this page, and then there's 3D cams which are, are not shown in this particular presentation. So for this axial cam, we can see here that as the cylinder rotates, um, there's a half joint here where the follower has a wheel that rolls inside of this groove. And so as the cam rotates, this follower is going to move back and forth as the wheel stays within this um, cam groove. We also can classify cams by the type of joint closure. In this particular case, we show a um, form closed system. Um, the previous ones were force closed. So I'm going to go back a little bit just to show you. Okay, so this would be um, an example of a force closed cam. In other words, the follower maintains contact with the cam surface via springs. This is the case in the translating follower and in this rotating follower here. So we have a spring and that spring keeps pressure on the back of this follower to keep it in contact with the cam surface. But we also have a form close. Those examples of force close. Here's a form close. In this case, this wheel on the follower stays within the cam because of the geometry. So when the geometry is a factor of keeping things together, we have a form closed cam. The same thing occurs in this particular situation. So as we have this follower moving back and forth here, it stays within this groove based on the shape of that groove. And so again, this is an example of form closed. And um, also we can classify cams in uh, according to the type of follower. Here we have curved or flat followers and rolling or sliding followers. So in this example here we have a rolling follower 
In this case, we have a sliding follower. So this, you see this mushroom shape here. So as the cam rotates, there's kind of a, a scrubbing here, right? A slipping here. Whereas in this case, we have a rolling between the cam and the follower. And in this case, we've kind of combined both of these in, in a way where um, we have sliding going on here, um, but we've made the whole system smaller um, by getting rid of the curved surface, right? And so if you look at it, um, from the very first example with our roller follower to our flat face follower, one thing that we've done with this case is that while we do have more friction that would be present in the previous case, we have um, less room required uh, for the flat face follower because we've gotten rid of the, the wheel and the bearing that would be there at that location. And so another way of classifying cams is based on the type of follower. And we see here a flat face follower, a mushroom type follower, and a roller follower. We also can classify cams by the type of motion constraints. Um, we'll get into this more um, later on in the in the chapter where we have critical extreme positions and critical path motion. We will start with critical extreme position um, motion constraints. They're a little bit easier to work with, and so that will be where we'll begin. And we also have the type of motion program. Um, so again, we can talk about um, a rise and a fall for the follower. We can talk about the follower rising falling and then remaining steady, remaining at that position, which would be called the dwell position. Or we can talk about a rise, a dwell, a fall, and a dwell. Um, these won't make much sense now, but if you think about those of you who are familiar with car engines, you can think about a piston rising and falling, or you can say that a piston rises, falls, and then remains there, in which case it dwells. Or you can have a rise, stay there, fall, and stay there. And so we'll talk about all these different types of motion programs. Now let's turn our attention to something called the SVAJ diagram. Um, we need to first define the motion of the follower. So the first thing that we do when designing a cam is we talk about the follower and we talk about the type of motion it's going to have. We're going to always be plotting this motion. We'll plot the follower position, which we will call S. We'll plot the follower's velocity, which we'll call V, the acceleration A, and the jerk J. These will all be functions of the cam angle. So as that cam is rotating, we'll be looking at the follower's position, velocity, acceleration, and jerk. Many of you may not be familiar with the um, term jerk, but it is the derivative of the acceleration, um, just like um, acceleration is the derivative of velocity. What our goal would be is to pick functions in rise and fall to match the periods of dwell. And so we'll be coming up with different functions, and, and you'll see how that's done in a second. Here's an exam example of a CAM, um, kind of a CAM profile, a CAM program specification. And so what we see in this particular case um, is those various graphs for position, velocity, acceleration, and jerk. And so what we see here is that um, the follower started at this low position, and then it rose gradually, and it dwelled during this period of time. And then it fell, and then it stayed back at the original height, which was zero in this case. And then it rose again, and then it fell again, and then it uh, about to start again. And so really we're talking about kind of eight different periods, right? We have a rise, a dwell, a fall, a dwell, a rise, a dwell, and a fall and another dwell. Um, if you take this position function that we see here and differentiate it, we then have a velocity function. We differentiate that and we have an acceleration function. And of course we differentiate the acceleration. Finally, we have this jerk function here. Just to kind of focus in, we have some infinities shown here. And what we're doing there is we're showing the fact that in this particular profile, the acceleration had a gap here. And so if we differentiate this, then we have a change in height with no change in run. So we get a negative infinity um, jerk and a positive infinity jerk here when we go up. I'm sorry, when we go down in this, in this way. So we can end up with an undefined a derivative if we have a discontinuity as shown here. Our first example, we're going to talk about a double dwell cam design and choosing particular SVAJ functions to accomplish this. Um, so as an example, what we want to do here is we want to find values um, of an engine to open, 
um, remain open for a certain time, close, and then remain closed for a certain time. Okay, so we're talking about valves of an engine, um, kind of those those things that let in um, the uh, fuel um, in a piston. And so we want the valves to open, remain open, which would be a dwell, and then um, close, which would be a fall, and then remain closed for a period of time, which would be a, a, another dwell or a second dwell. The requirements for the dwells um, where the valve is held open or closed might look like that in this particular figure. Okay, and so what we have is a period of time where we're not moving the valve at all, and then we're going to rise, so the valve is going to remain at some high position once it finishes rising, and then it's going to fall and then remain there until it's ready to start again. And so what you'll see here is we have about 360 degrees of motion. That dwell happens for 90 degrees. Now this 90 degrees refers to the cam's rotation. Okay, so while a lot of this information here is the follower, the independent axis, the x-axis is actually the cam angle. And so for the first 90 degrees, the follower is not moving. And then for the next 90 degrees, the follower is rising from zero millimeters or inch up to one millimeter or inch. And it's going to remain there for another 90 degrees, and then it's going to fall. Our purpose in our design is to find a function to get us from the low point to the high point, and another function to get us from the high point to the low point. Looking at this, you can kind of start to imagine what will get us from this low point to this high point and from the high point to the low point. And that's how that's what we're going to focus on now. Oh, one other thing. Down here we also have a time associated. And so we're saying we're going to complete this entire thing in one second. And of course, 0 to 360, we can't change that, but we could change the amount of time this takes by spinning the cam slower or faster. The most obvious function that we could use to get us from those low points to those high points and then from the high point back to the low point would be a straight line. Um, we'll do that and then we'll look at the velocity, acceleration, and jerk profiles of the resulting motion. Okay, so what we're saying is we're going to just put a straight line in here. So we'll have a little red line that takes us from this low point up to the high point and then remains high. And then from the high point back to the low point, another straight line. And this will be our S profile, right, our position. And then we'll look at the derivatives of that. And so here we have, so we've combined, we just have straight lines getting us from the low point to the high point, and then from the high point back down. If we take a derivative of this, we'll, we'll find the following, right? And so this is a constant, and so we'll have a constant velocity during this period of time. And this is also a constant, just a negative of this one. And so that derivative will give us this velocity profile. So this is our position graph. This would be our velocity graph, our acceleration. Again, we see negatives cropping, I'm sorry, infinities cropping in here because we have an instantaneous jump over zero time. And so we get an infinity here, here, and here for our acceleration profile and infinity squared for our jerk profile. What we'll find is that this is an unacceptable design because we have infinite acceleration and an infinite acceleration cannot be obtained in real life. And so what we need to do is we need to pay very close attention to the transition from one type of motion to another. Okay, so immediately when we see a type of profile like this, again, we weren't able to do anything with the velocity jerk and acceleration. Once we picked the line here and here, all of these derivatives had to be the way that they are. They cannot be changed. And so what we're going to have to do is find functions that fit in from low to high and from high to low that don't result in these infinities on our acceleration profile. So we need to pay more close attention to the transition from one type of motion to another. And by one type of motion, we're saying from a low dwell to a high dwell, we have to pay more attention to what we're doing here and here. This is where we'll bring in the fundamental law of cam design. A cam function must be continuous through the first and second derivatives of displacement across the entire interval. Um, and a corollary to that is that the jerk function must remain finite across the entire interval. Okay, so again, let's focus in a little bit more closely on this fundamental law. A cam function must be continuous through the first and second derivatives. And so let's go back and look at that first and second derivative. The first derivative, of course, is velocity. The second derivative is acceleration. Right here, 
we see that the first derivative is not continuous. Okay, so right away we know that we're not going to have um, a good CAM profile according to the fundamental law. We don't even need to go to the second derivative, which is acceleration. And furthermore, our jerk function must be finite. And of course, here we see that we have infinite jerk in these functions. And so we have failed the fundamental law. In our next video, what we'll do is we'll focus on how to use this fundamental law to get a profile that takes us from low to high without having these discontinuities. That'll be what we'll focus on next. And so we'll pick up on the slide um, right after this one.